In this video, let's take a look at the Nissan 4-speed automatic transmission RL4R01A or B model 4EX65 or 66. This transmission can be found in year model from 98 to 2004. Nissan VG 33E engine, VQ 35DE engine, also the Mazda RX-7, MPV, and 626, including Renault and some Infiniti models. More information will be specified in the video. Our main focus of this video is to install this rear output shaft that is connected to the drive shaft. But before we can do so, we want to take a look at the reverse clutch drum assembly. In the video description, you will see a link on how to disassemble the reverse clutch drum assembly for servicing its inner D-ring an outer oil seal for the piston, replacing the clutch and the steel liner. Same thing goes for the high clutch drum assembly. You also show how to remove the piston, replacing the D-ring, the oil seal, and replacing of the piston, which is activated by hydraulic pressure. Also replacement of the clutch and the steel liner. Same thing for the overrun clutch, which are the clutch on the bottom, and the forward clutch inside its drum assembly. Now, what we need to take careful attention to here is when you finish installing these clutches, you need to measure the clearance between the steel liner and the retainer clip. Same thing for the forward clutch assembly. You want to measure that clearance when you're finished stacking your clutches and steel liner. So on the screen, you will see the specification in measurement for a millimeter for the clearance for the clutches to have some room so they can rotate freely when the piston is disengaged. And we will first start by installing these reverse brake clutch and steel liner hardware with its retainer clip. Once that's installed, we want to make sure we could place this forward and overrun drum clutch assembly in location of the transmission case. You will see there are four holes for hydraulic passageway that will need to be aligned with these four holes. Now there's only one way for bolting in this overrun forward drum assembly and what we have here is a low one-way clutch in a race assembly with four plastic seal. Care and attention must be taken when installing this part so damage does not occur onto the plastic seal. It is best to install the overrun the forward drum clutch assembly as one unit with this inner race into the transmission case. Let's take a look at that seal and you can see it has an opening. It's precisely cut so when it's fully closed, when the end is closed like this, it's able to seal the cavity that it's in so it could send the oil that's coming in from the four passageway in the rear, that oil will most likely end up for lubrication, as you can see, and it also distributed in many other ways, like you can see there are some small holes in the middle, and you can also see larger holes between the two, where the two seals will go. Now you can see here is a damaged seal from installing 
the assembly without the front forward drum assembly. So now we have to replace this seal because you see it's severely damaged. And that's going to be most of the problem when it comes to putting these two things together and installing it inside of the transmission case. The oil that comes in from those passageway also make an entrance here. And we can see over here. So this lower one is for the overrun piston and this outer one is for the forward piston. The hydraulic fluid also continues inside the passageway where it enters the shaft. At this point, it's distributed to the park gear for spill lubrication and it also exit here for lubricating the one-way clutch also known as the sprag inside where the remaining oil in that shaft will spill on the end into the planetary for lubrication. Once the understanding has been gained that these two passageways are for piston activation, when we look we're going to see two holes here those are for lubrication and we'll be looking here it's for lubricating that one-way clutch the roller bearing and when we take a look all the way up front we're going to see there's a hard bearing that's this aluminum one right here that would be for this lubrication right here also we'll see some additional holes and that's for sending the pressure for the forward clutch piston and the overrun clutch piston that connects with these two passageways between the seal. Once the low one-way clutch in a race has been installed, you want to make sure it's seated like this because it will have the likeliness to seat a few millimeters higher if it should encounter a damage with a seal like this. So you have to look out for that. This is the low and reverse brake clutch assembly. Pay close attention to this area, how the steel liner is separated differently from over here. Also pay close attention to this little tab right here, because that's where we will want to install this U-clip. This U-clip is for holding the stack of seal liner and clutch together. Without this heavy steel plate. So without this steel plate, like this, against the steel liner, for holding the complete hardware, preventing it from rattling inside of the transmission when the vehicle is being driven on rough road surface condition. In this stack of steel liner and clutches, we will start with a wave plate, also known as a dish plate. So you can see on the inner circle is beveled to the bottom while the top is tapered. We first want to install this wave plate the reason for this wave plate is to absorb impact from this piston which is the low and reverse brake piston. The next steel liner will be a steel liner against the clutch. That will be the wet fiber clutch. You have to pay attention to down here where all the steel liner must index. We'll place another clutch in there. When assembling the clutch in the steel liner, you want to make sure that the assembly, the hardware, has been soaked 
in transmission fluid. Now you will know the condition of the clutches because you could see that line traveling through it and that will tell you that it's still in good working condition. Also, aligning the two on the clutch is very important. This will prepare for easy installation of the overrun forward clutch assembly. This is our last clutch for installation. This is where we want to install that U-clip up here. And that will be at the 11 o'clock position. The best way for getting to that, you will have to pick up the stack of clutch and steel liner. And place the U-clip pressing it down. You have to make sure you have all the clutches and you will push this down. If this side have a tendency for lifting, you will also push it down too. Now remember we have to align the two on the clutches for easy installation of the overrun forward clutch assembly. Once that U-clip has been installed from lifting the stack, you see all the tooth of the clutches are perfectly in line. This is when you're going to want to This is when you're going to want to push down on the stack of clutch on both sides so it remains seated stack against one another. And do not forget to keep the clutch all the two in a line. This is where the heavy steel ring, this is the pressure plate, will be installed the same way like the clutch liner. Now it's time for us to replace the C-clip. What's important here is you want to make sure you check the clearance of the C-clip when it's installed from the bottom of the C-clip to the top of this heavy steel liner when all the clutches steel liner has been pushed down you want to make sure you have that factory recommended measurement for clearance purpose the steel ring snapped into location, you will use your tool for pushing back on the stack of clutch and steel liner, placing your feeling gauge between the C-clip and the steel liner at different location for the C-clip and the steel liner to retain a clearance measurement which is important for disengaging the clutches when it is not in use. This spring ring would be the next part to be installed onto that piston. Before doing so we want to see how it seat against the overrun forward clutch assembly. What we want to look at since we're at this area are these passageways that we have before us. The first one you will notice is where the transmission bolt hole is for holding the oil front pump 
onto the casing. That second hole is a cavity for oil pressure and that will be oil pump feedback pressure. That's just a normal cavity. This is another bolt hole for holding the oil pump against the transmission case. This opening that we have on the bottom here is the oil pump discharge hole. Next to this discharge hole is front lubrication hole. Then we have a high clutch pressure. Next to that is a bolt hole for, like I said, holding the front oil pump against the transmission case. That next hole is a hydraulic passageway and that is for the torque converter operation pressure. The next one is the reverse clutch pressure and this third one would be torque converter operation pressure. Then we have a bolt hole for the front oil pump against the transmission case. This large opening on the side is the oil pump intake hole which feeds down to the strainer inside the oil sump against the valve body. Now let's take a look at where this part seats. This is the overrun forward clutch from assembly and that is how this spring ring will seat against. So we can see when it's turning, it will most likely turn with it and the foot for the spring that sits inside of the piston may also cause the piston to turn and that's okay. So we have identified that most of the weight is distributed on this inner ring onto this inner ring so it can be turned. Let's place the spring ring onto the piston. The goal here is to pre-mark a location that will be aligned with the overrun forward clutch assembly for maintaining alignment passageway with these four holes. Now what needs to be understand is that that assembly for the forward drum and the overrun clutch can only be installed one way because you will notice three bolts in between these two hydraulic passageway, one bolt in between these two, and then we have two in between these two, and we have two in between these two. So there is only one way for installing the bolts on to the forward drum assembly. Here is a mark that was placed to align with the one in the transmission casting and you notice it's right next to the hydraulic hole with the two bolt holes and then you see another hydraulic hole with two bolt holes same thing for over here and here we have one so we have to place this in aligning it perfectly so we could have this mark aligned with the mark in the transmission now this part is installed in the overrun forward clutch drum assembly and this part is known as the low one-way clutch inner race so we will be referring to this a lot during the process of placing its bolts which are torques to the transmission case and you must understand that it rotates one way when the drum is fitted inside of the transmission the drum will only be able to rotate clockwise and not counterclockwise. Placing this part is, is in set. Placing this part in is essential. And you want it to drop as smooth as it possibly can because you don't want that low one-way clutch in a race to drop out of the drum assembly. So you will not have much room to rotate this assembly for clutch alignment. This is why it's extremely important 
that the two of the clutch are aligned, making the assembly fitting easy. Once this assembly is fully fitted inside the transmission case, you will measure from here to the flat top and you should have approximately nine inches. That's when it display a spring action to it. This is letting us know that the assembly has been fully installed to all the clutch liner tooth or teeth and is now sitting on the spring ring ready to be bolted in position from the rear. So this part will have to be held in with one hand while the other hand catches the bolt on the other side. When we look in there for the bolt holes we can see they're very close but when we look up in there to look for the marking we could see we're off. So this is going to require lifting the assembly and resetting it so that paint could be aligned for catching the bolts and holding the assembly to the transmission case housing. Careful attention must be taken when placing the transmission on the rear making sure this parking rod for engaging the park gear does not become broken. Now when we take another look in there we could see the alignment is much closer and it's a little advanced but since it's advanced it means that the holes can be moved into position because remember that's a one way in a race and it only rolls one way. You will be able to confirm that all the bolts and the holes are aligned once you have one of those torque bolts catch in location and you can see all the holes are ready for fitting and this makes sure that our alignment is perfect. Let's talk about a better way for installing these plastic seals that are pre-cut from the factory for installation so we cannot cut them any shorter to get them to compress any closer preventing them from becoming damaged. What we need to do is to keep the seal, the end, together when this assembly has been placed into its location. So this will be a good time for us to place some glue adhesive in this area in the gap between the seal and closing it, holding it, so it will remain bonded and never come apart like these to become destroyed. That's what's most likely caused the damage of the seal is because the ends are flipping out of the groove and becoming caught in the against object and causing a damage like that. So placing this adhesive in between the seal is the best way for preserving it. Here's another way for installing that overrun forward clutch drum assembly and that's installing this one way low clutch in a race. Now like I said when we install this you want to make sure all your seal is nicely closed and not out of the groove and will not encounter any problems with the drum assembly. Another thing is we want to make sure the clutch, all the teeth are aligned. This is where we're going to take the drum and lower it Now the rotation is for the alignment of the clutch 
And the only thing that could prevent it from dropping would most likely be the seal. So it's going to require removing, checking the seal, and most of the time you're going to find it damaged. So you're going to have to get a few of those seals. That's not the only ones. There are others. Now you can see that in a race, this one-way clutch, I didn't fully bolt it to the fixture. Like I said, this is going to be an impossible way for fitting because of problems with the clutch. You see the clutch is already out of line. Wasting the time doing that is going to destroy the clutch, the seals. Here is a convenient tool that can be developed for holding that inner race up against the power drum assembly while it's being aligned with the clutch liner inside the transmission. Here you can see we have more than five parts that are available to be installed on the shaft, the rear output shaft. So the first part we want to place on that forward clutch drum would be this roller washer, this truss washer. Now this washer will sit against this hub. This will be called the overrun clutch hub. So you see we have a plastic washer and it has five dowels on it that will have to be placed into the holes. Now, once we have this in position, we're going to need to drop this one in. But you have to understand that this part here is the forward clutch hub and forward one-way clutch with an outer race. So this turns one way, and what we need to look for here is another plastic, and this has two dowels on it. So we place together like this. Now this part here is the rear internal gear mounted together with the front clutch hub and forward one way. So it turns one way. Now this planetary will be installed into here. You have to pay careful attention that you have this roller bearing, this thrust bearing. And here we have the race, and it has three dowels on it to be placed into the hole. So this will be placed into the planetary. Now this will go here, and then we will have this thrust washer with this edge seated below for installation. So you'll notice this white mark, and that's the reference with the rear when bolting this assembly to align those hydraulic passageways in the rear. So the important part is you want to make sure you always have these tooth on the clutch perfectly in line to ease the effort of the assembly. This is our thrust washer, thrust bearing, and that we want to seat down with this edge leading down. Now we will place a 
and that will be the overrun clutch hub. So once this is seated, when you lift on this bearing, it should be seated on the bearing and fully engage with the overrun clutch. Here's an important part about when you drop this overrun clutch hub in place. You want to make sure the plastic dowel is extended into the hole and this washer has no movement. The next part we want to install would be this forward clutch hub and one way clutch out of race. And we make sure we have this plastic in line. I'm going to drop this into position. So this will have to be held with the petroleum, the Vaseline. Now here's another thing. Do not substitute petroleum jelly for Vaseline because the petroleum jelly will most likely deform the rubber seals. So here we have the front internal gear and the rear planetary that has to be placed down there. Now is the best time to lubricate these roller bearing, these truss bearing. Remember we have a race on the back of this planetary that has to be secure with three lugs. This is complete. At this point, we want to install the rear drive shaft axle for the transmission, the park gear, also known as a pole gear, the thrust bearing that has to be applied on this side of the pole gear, and these two C-clip, the small one for the internal and the larger one for holding the pole gear against this thrust bearing. Replacing of this large C-clip for the pole gear against the axle will most likely become deformed and expand. So it will have to be closed back in with the pliers so it could maintain compression onto the spline groove for the shaft. That is very important. This is the first C-clip we want to install. Once the C-clip has been perfected, it comes straight and then close. I want to place it onto this drive shaft axle. It will become most difficult installing this C-clip onto the spline for the shaft where it has to be installed. But it's very important that you install that C-clip first, then the pole gear or the park gear can be placed in location on the shaft and we can also install the thrust bearing placing the shaft through the transmission tail housing holding the internal of the transmission planetary Turning it left to right, applying force forward, and this has assembled the tail shaft and the park gear. So here we have the rod for engaging the park gear. Careful attention must be taken when placing the transmission on the rear that this rod does not become damaged and its linkage. One hand must be placed on the planetary while the output shaft is being placed in location. We could see the shaft protruding 
in the center of the planetary next to the roller bearing. This is where we want to install the smaller seat clip onto the shaft between the roller bearing. The easiest way for installing the seat clip is to make sure the transmission tail end, the shaft, is braced against the wall on the table. So this way when you're installing this clip, it will not push the shaft out the transmission. Careful attention must be taken Careful attention must be taken in installing the C-clip to prevent damage of that needle roller bearing. So you have to make sure that the C-clip is seated into the groove of the shaft. And that will be perfectly seated. This has complete the end of the output tail shaft for the internal of the transmission. The hole that you see here is what will spill hydraulic fluid onto this planetary and its gear for lubrication. Now we've already spoken before about this hole and its conjunction with lubricating other parts like the overrun and forward clutch from assembly. So that's what it looks like when the shaft is rotating. Inspection to all the gears must be taken carefully, no chip or a broken tooth. Let's take a look at the tail shaft housing. We can see it says Jacko Corporation and it's a 4EX75 and then there's a number on the bottom of it. Before installing this tail housing on the rear of the transmission housing, we want to take a look at the inside. We want to make sure that plastic gear is in good condition. We want to make sure it doesn't have any broken tooth. Now we want to take a look at the lock for the park gear. And that will be this right here. This part is what engage into one of these slots and lock the transmission into park. And this rod here, see this large part, that large part will engage into here and push that lock to engage onto this gear, placing the transmission into park. So that's what happens when you turn the shifter. That plastic gear is the VSS sensor. It's also related to the governor, which is electronically mounted inside the transmission. A mechanical governor will be mounted on the tail of the shaft. Here we have that worm gear, so it could come in contact with that VSS sensor. At the tail of this housing, you will notice there's a bushing in here. You have to make sure that it's in good condition. Also the seal, and that's the VSS sensor. But this tail shaft is to be installed, you have to look out for this dowel pin. It will have to be placed into here and making sure this park rod sits in here. Bolt in the tail shaft housing together. You're going to have three short bolts like this for the bottom. And you're going to have seven long ones for completing the top along the sides. Make sure you bolt and tighten the fasteners to the factory recommended torque amount. This have complete the rear output shaft for the Nissan RL4R01A or B automatic four-speed transmission.